What's good, y'all, man? We are back again with another video, man. I told y'all for the, those that watched my last video that that was the last installment of the top tens list. Y'all gave me a lot of feedback for that. I like it. I like that y'all enjoyed those videos. But I also told y'all, um, I have a surprise for y'all. I am going back to doing breakdown videos. If you've been watching the channel for about a year now, I started doing breakdown videos around this time last year. I think my first breakdown video was on Pascal Siakam. Then I did another one in January, and I loved that video because I was basically pointing out some of the stuff that doesn't get talked about in Pascal Siakam's game. I think people just think he just spams B and just does spins all the time. No, Pascal Siakam has game. And I did a video on that, and then right after that, that's when he made that all NBA push. And then I made a video also on Burning Ingram, and that's when he just dogged in the playoffs right after that. Then I made another one about Darius Garland and Chris Paul, and I compared the two, and then did a breakdown on them two in the same video. And I really loved that video because, one, I think that's one of my best videos I've ever recorded as far as how I broke it down. I think I broke it down pretty beautifully. And then right after that, I started seeing a lot of people on Twitter and stuff compare Darius Garland to Chris Paul. I'm not saying I started it, but I think I had a hand in doing that, but... For this one, we're doing a video on Herb Jones, so let's go. Now, the thing about Herb Jones is we all know the guy's an elite, and I mean elite, damn near generational defensive talent. But when I'm looking at his game, I want people to realize that he has potential on the other side of the ball. If you know me, you know one of my favorite players is Colin Sexton. And I've been watching Colin Sexton since high school, but in college, he played with Herb Jones, so I've also been watching Herb Jones for like the last three years. And then when Colin left, um, I was also a big fan of their coach, Nate Oates. So I was definitely paying attention to Herb in college. And while watching how Nate Oates played Herb, he got played a lot at the top of the key, which showed his ball handling capabilities and showed his playmaking capabilities. And I don't think he was able to show people that just started watching her. I don't think he's able to show y'all that in the NBA. But this, my whole point of bringing this video is just to show it to y'all like, Herb has a lot to his game. Like Herb is a really good passer for his size. Herb, I'm not saying he's an elite ball handler. I'm not saying he's a crafty ball handler. But for his size, he knows what to do. He knows what to do with that ball. He knows what to do. And if you let him go to his left, and he's pretty much damn near unstoppable. Because when we're looking at Herb, like, we see how long he is. I'm not going to sit here and cap. Like, I know his measurements or something. Pause. But once he gets to his left, then he, his left, then he uses his long strides to get to the hoop. He's damn near unstoppable. Damn near unstoppable. Then when you look at his finishing, he's a really, really good finisher. So when I'm looking at his game, I don't think we got to see a lot of that in his first year. But I'm going to just break down some highlights from Alabama where we've seen a lot of Herb Jones offensive highlights and offensive talent. Now right here, he has a big man on him. And all he really does is just uses a simple cross, but matchups like this is what Herb's gonna see. He's gonna see some fours, he's gonna see some threes. But stuff like this, he's able to attack them off the dribble because he's so long. He has a really quick first step, and I don't think a lot of people realize. He has a handle and he has a really quick first step. Gets to the rim again. Great, great defense. I'm not going to lie. Great recovery by the big. He's there all time. That's a great contest. But the nigga is so long. Pause. You can't block that. You can't really block a guy like this. I don't understand how. <laughs> and he's a really good finisher. So stuff like this. And then you get this highlight right here. The same thing. I'm taking a big off the dribble. Again, going to my right. Give you a little hezzy. And I'm finishing with my left. He's a really crafty finisher on both sides of the rim. Hezzy. Finish with the left. Easy. Now, the coach, like I told you earlier, the coach Nate Oaks, where he did a lot where Herb is, and that's why I, I love Alabama. If you're a guard or you're a point forward, go to Alabama because Nate Oaks will put you in the right position to succeed. So what he did was he put her at, Herb at the top of the key a lot and just let him play, make, let him do what he needed to do to get better. While doing that, he got a lot of results like this. I'm taking you off the dribble, quick jab step, and I'm finishing over whoever's down there. And he didn't really get to do... This is why I'm showing y'all college highlights because I don't think people realize Herb can do some shit off the dribble, bro. He's not just an off-ball guy. Like, that's that's pretty crazy. A little quick jab step. And I'll take you to the rim, and I'm yamming over you. You can't block that. He probably has, like, seven two wings, man. The kid's long as hell. Pause. Now, like I said, I watched a lot of Alabama. So this play I'm about to show you, this play is for Herb. This play is supposed to free him up at the paint 
for E.T. Lil. He, he shot a lot of floaters in college. But her being a good passer, like I said, I, and I really don't think he gets enough credit for it, which I don't mind because he didn't really have a lot of ball handling. Cable. Not, not a, he didn't really have a ball in his hand a lot in his rookie year. But this play was meant for him to get a layup at the rim. But look what he does. Runs the play. Sees Josh Primo in the corner wide open. Puts the pass where he needs to be, where the defender can't recover. And that's it. That's an easy bucket for Josh Primo. Josh Primo was a dog in college. I ain't gonna lie. I, lo I love Josh Primo's game. But, like, that's that's just a good pass, bro. That's just a good pass. That's, that's, that's actually a perfect pass to make. And this one, same thing. Put him in the post. Cut off the basketball, Josh Primo. I'm gonna find you the ball. I just wanted to show y'all this one. But this highlight right here is why I really wanted to show y'all this. This is a zone by Kentucky. Now, Herb, being who Herb is, being so tall, being so long, he's allowed to see over the defense and allowed him to make this play to number 41, I think that is. Um, sees Olivier Scar right there lagging, probably looking at, I believe that's Javon Quinterly, and sees him lacking. Now, he's wide open. That's an easy thumb. But being able to see over the defense allowed him to make that laser pass right there. That's what happened. Same thing with this. Attacks the middle part of the zone, draws two defenders, kicks it to John Petty right here. He's wide open. And he finishes for the layup or the dunk. Yeah, one of those. But like stuff like that, I think he has the capability to do that with the Pelicans. It's just, it's just about earning more respect within the scheme, and that's something we will talk about later in this video. Now the handle in this play is 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 really good, but like this one I'm talking about, where I'm talking about his finishing. Like, look at this shit. I'm gonna give you a little in and out cross. How the fuck do you stop a guy? And I hate saying this, but how do you stop a guy that long, bro? That's pause, but like, yo, that's so tough, bro. That is tough. And this, like I'm saying, we didn't see this. And I can't wait till he shows y'all this side of his game because Herb Jones has a lot of game, bro. And a lot of in a lot of these clips that I wanted to show y'all, he shot a lot of pull-up threes. In Alabama, but I didn't want to make this video super long, and it's because it's gonna be long. Paul, oh my God! And when we look at his rookie year, I mean, he averaged 10 points, shooting 34% from the three, and then in the last 20 games, he raised it up to 36% from the three. And the reason why I love second half stats only for rookies, though, is because that's around that time where we see that the game's starting to slow down for certain certain rookies, and then. For the rookies that it's not slowing down for it, we see who they really are sometimes. But for him, he raised his game for his team to make the play. And that's around when they just traded for CJ. So they were just trying to make that play in spot. I believe they were at 11, fighting with the Lakers, back and forth with the Lakers. And around that time, he raised his game for them to make their spot. There were games towards the end of the season where he was the sole reason why they won. One that jumps off to me is when he beat my team. Um, that's the game that Ricky Rubio tore his ACL, which also sucks. But he dropped 25 points and had three clutch blocks in the fourth quarter to help them win. And that's, they were down by 20. And that's a game where they didn't have B.I. and they didn't have C.J. And he was the best player on that court after Ricky Rubio because Ricky Rubio was also cooking before he got hurt. But her, man, Herb just went out there and won them that game. Now, the whole point of this video is, yes, Herb's an elite defender, but I think Herb has a lot of offensive tools. To where down the line, I wouldn't be surprised. Not if he's a top player in this league, but if he's one of the best 3 D wings in this league and a perennial all-star. Because I think he has a lot to his game that he hasn't been able to unlock yet. Like, for example, Kawhi. And, and I, I hate using this comparison because it's lazy, but it's true. Kawhi came in and he was a good defender, a good spot-up shooter, but that's it. But in San Diego State, you've seen the little flashes of the mid-range. You see the Hezel dribble pull-up that he had in college in San Diego State. And then he earned his respect in the league, earned his respect from Pop. And that's when he blossomed. So I'm saying I wouldn't be surprised if down the line, Herb Jones gains his respect from Willie Gain. Game, I mean, really, really green. Gains his respect from his teammates. Earns more confidence in himself. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's an all-star talent because he literally has all the tools. On defense, he's one of the best defenders in the league already as a rookie. And then I expect as he gets bigger, as he gets stronger, it's, it's going to be worse for the league. It's definitely going to be worse for the league because he's 6'8", 6 6'9". 6 it's going to be a time where you can run out of lineup with freaking Brandon Ingram, Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, 
and, and Jonas Valanciunas and Zion Williamson, like, they can kill the league soon with how deep they are, how paused, how long they are. Like, that team is really scary. And Herb's a big part of it. And I won't be surprised if down the line he is a top three player on that team, especially with CJ there, all them other guys there. I think I think Herb got it. So let me know how y'all did, how y'all think I did on this video. This is another late night video, so I am tired. But shout out to y'all. We will be getting more breakdowns this week because I do go on vacation next week. So peace out. Thank you.